In this lesson, we are going to discuss synthesis or combination reactions. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to define synthesis or combination reactions and predict the reactants or products of synthesis reactions. Synthesis reactions are chemical reactions involving two or more reactants to form one compound product, thus the name combination reaction. It has the general formula A plus B producing product AB. Reactants A and B are simpler substances, while the product AB is a more complex substance. In this lesson, we are going to discuss four synthesis reactions. The first one is the reaction between a metal and a nonmetal to produce a binary ionic compound. Both reactants in this reaction are free elements, meaning they are not paired with any other element. But as they form a product, they will form a binary ionic compound, which will be formed from the crisscross of charges. We already know that metals form cations, or ions that carry positive charges since they donate electrons to nonmetals that form an ions that carry negative charges. A crisscross of charges will be done to come up with the formula of the ionic compound. The charge of each element will be the subscript of the other element. Let us look at some examples of this reaction. We have here the reaction of sodium and oxygen. Our metal here is sodium, a metal belonging in group 1A, thus having a charge of positive 1 as a cation. On the other hand, oxygen is the nonmetal that belongs to group 6A, thus having a charge of negative 2 as an anion. To identify the ionic compound that will be formed from these two, we are going to do crisscross of charges. Thus, we have Na sub 2 and O or sodium oxide. This reaction, however, is not yet balanced. To balance oxygen, we use 2 as a coefficient of sodium oxide. To balance sodium, we use 4 as a coefficient of sodium. The complete balanced reaction is 4 moles of sodium will react with 1 mole of the diatomic oxygen to form 2 moles of sodium oxide. For the next example, let's predict the product that will be formed by magnesium and sulfur. Here, magnesium belongs to group 2A, thus, it has a charge of positive 2 as a cation. On the other hand, sulfur belongs to group 6A, thus, it has a charge of negative 2 as an anion. After doing crisscross of charges, we're going to have MgS or magnesium sulfide. This equation is already balanced. Therefore, one mole of magnesium reacts with one mole of sulfur to produce magnesium sulfide. There are also some synthesis reactions of the same kind that have two possible products. For example, the reaction of iron and oxygen will result into two different products since iron is a type 2 metal, meaning it has two possible charges, namely iron 2 and iron 3. Therefore, the two products of this reaction are iron 2 oxide and iron 3 oxide. Both are products of the crisscross of charges of iron and oxygen. For the full balance reactions, 2 moles of iron reacts with 1 mole of oxygen to produce 2 moles of iron 2 oxide. On the other hand, 4 moles of iron reacts with 3 moles of oxygen to produce 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. The second synthesis reaction that we will discuss is the reaction between a non-metal and oxygen to form non-metal oxide. For this reaction, a covalent compound will be formed. Remember that for covalent compounds, we consider the ratio of the non-metal elements in the formation of the actual compound. For example, we have 2 moles of carbon reacting with 1 mole of the diatomic oxygen. These reactants have a ratio of 2 is to 2. Thus, the product should have 2 carbon atoms and 2 oxygen atoms. However, we do not have a compound named by carbon dioxide. Therefore, we will have 2 moles of carbon monoxide, which gives us 2 of each element, following the 2 is to 2 ratio of the reactants. For the other reaction, we have 1 mole of carbon reacting with 1 mole of the diatomic oxygen. These reactants have a ratio of 1 is to 2. Thus, the product should have 1 carbon atom and 2 oxygen atoms. The product is therefore carbon dioxide, a covalent compound with 1 carbon and 2 oxygen atoms. 
for the second example, we are going to identify the reactants needed to form two moles of nitrogen dioxide. The ratio of nitrogen to oxygen in the product is 2 nitrogen for every 4 oxygen. The reactants should follow this ratio too. The non-metal that will form a non-metal oxide here is nitrogen. And we know that nitrogen and oxygen are both diatomic elements. Meaning, a subscript of 2 should be written for both reactants. However, this does not yet follow the 2 is to 4 ratio because it is not yet balanced. Thus, we write 2 as a coefficient of oxygen. The complete balance reaction is 1 mole of nitrogen reacts with 2 moles of oxygen to form 2 moles of nitrogen dioxide. For the next example, we are going to identify what reactants will lead to the formation of 2 moles of diphosphorus pentoxide. This product has a ratio of 4 phosphorus atoms for every 10 oxygen atoms. We know that phosphorus is a tetraatomic element, and oxygen is a diatomic element. So we have P sub 4 plus O sub 2. However, this only has a 4 is 2 ratio when we need 4 is to 10. So we need to balance the equation by using 5 as a coefficient of oxygen. Thus, the complete reaction is 1 mole of the tetraatomic phosphorus molecule reacts with 5 moles of the diatomic oxygen molecule to form 2 moles of diphosphorus pentoxide. The next synthesis reaction that we are going to discuss is the reaction between a metal oxide and water. In this reaction, the metal from the metal oxide disassociates into a cation to bond with the hydroxyl ion of water to form a metal hydroxide. This metal is a base since the metal oxide is a basic anhydride. For the first example, we are going to identify the product of iron to oxide and water. A technique in identifying products of metal oxides and water is to copy the name of the metal and attaching the word hydroxide. Since the metal in this reaction is iron that will form the iron 2 cation, the expected product should be iron 2 hydroxide. Let us identify the formula for this product. Since iron will form an iron 2 cation, its charge is positive 2. Hydroxyl on the other hand is OH with a charge of negative 1. We do crystals of charges to get the final formula. So we have FeOH2 or iron 2 hydroxide. So the complete balanced reaction is 1 mole of iron 2 oxide reacts with 1 mole of water to produce 1 mole of iron 2 hydroxide. The next reaction is the reaction between sodium oxide and water. Using our technique, the product of this reaction should be sodium hydroxide. To determine the formula of this product, we're going to identify the ions. These are sodium ion with a positive 1 charge and the hydroxide ion with a negative 1 charge. Doing a crisscross of charges, the product will be NaOH. Lastly, we need to balance this reaction to come up with 1 mole of sodium oxide reacts with 1 mole of water to produce 2 moles of sodium hydroxide. The last reaction is a reaction between a non-metal oxide and water. This reaction will form an oxyacid. Remember that an oxyacid is an acid containing a hydrogen ion and an oxyan ion. To determine the oxyacid product of this reaction, we should determine the oxidation number of the non-metal in the non-metal oxide. To do this, we assign negative 2 as the oxidation number of oxygen. To get the oxidation number of the non-metal, we are going to identify the number that would make the total oxidation number of the compound 0. We are going to compare it to the oxyacids that will be possibly formed by the synthesis reaction. The oxidation number of oxygen in the oxyacid is still negative 2, while for hydrogen, it is positive 1. If we get the same oxidation number for N for the non-metal in the oxyacid, that will be the product of the reaction. To elaborate on this, let us identify the oxyacid products of sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. We need to check for the oxidation number of the non-metal in the oxide. Oxygen in both oxides have an oxidation number of negative 2. For sulfur dioxide, 
this will be equal to negative 4 since there are two oxygen atoms. For sulfur trioxide, this will be equal to negative 6 since there are three oxygen atoms. The total oxidation numbers of the elements multiplied to the number of atoms in the compound should be equal to 0. So for sulfur dioxide, for the compound to have a zero total oxidation number, sulfur should be equal to positive 4. On the other hand, for sulfur trioxide, sulfur should be equal to negative 6. Now that we have already identified the oxidation number for sulfur in the non-metal oxides, we can now identify which oxy acid will be produced for the reactions of the non-metals above with water. The possible oxy acids are hyposulfurous acid, sulfurous acid, sulfuric acid, and persulfuric acid. For all of these acids, the oxidation number of oxygen is negative 2. This will lead to a subtotal of negative 4 for hyposulfurous acid, negative 6 for sulfurous acid, negative 8 for sulfuric acid, and negative 10 for persulfuric acid. For hydrogen, all of these acids will have a positive 1 oxidation number, giving a subtotal of positive 2. Now, we can identify the oxidation number of sulfur for these oxy acids. The oxidation number for sulfur in these acids will be the number that will make the total oxidation number 0. For hyposulfurous acid, since the subtotal is negative 2, sulfur is positive 2. For sulfurous acid, to cancel negative 4, sulfur is positive 4. For sulfuric acid, it is positive 6. And lastly, for persulfuric acid, it is positive 8. Since sulfur in sulfurous acid has an oxidation number, the same with sulfur in sulfur dioxide, it is the product of its reaction with water. On the other hand, sulfuric acid and sulfur trioxide both have positive 6 as the oxidation number of sulfur. Therefore, one mole of sulfur dioxide reacts with one mole of water to produce one mole of sulfurous acid, and one mole of sulfur trioxide reacts with one mole of water to produce one mole of sulfuric acid. Let us look at another example. Let us predict the product that will be formed by the reaction of dinitrogen pentoxide in water. We need to determine the oxidation number of nitrogen in the non-metal oxide. Oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2 for a subtotal of negative 10. To have a zero total oxidation number, nitrogen should be positive 10. But since there are two atoms of nitrogen, the oxidation number of nitrogen is positive 5. The oxy acids associated with nitrogen are nitrous acid and nitric acid. Since oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2, we have a subtotal of negative 4 for nitrous acid and negative 6 for nitric acid. Hydrogen then has positive 1 oxidation number. To have a zero oxidation number for nitrous acid, nitrogen should be positive 3. On the other hand, nitric acid should have nitrogen that has an oxidation number of positive 5. Since nitrogen in the non-metal oxide has an oxidation number of positive 5, the product of this reaction is nitric acid. Particularly, there should be 2 moles of this oxy acid. Thus, the final balance reaction is 1 mole of dinitrogen pentoxide reacts with 1 mole of water to produce 2 moles of nitric acid. Now that we have discussed the different synthesis reactions, we can now review the following key points. Synthesis reactions involve the combination of two or more reactants to form a new product. Metals react with non-metals to produce binary ionic compounds. A non-metal reacts with oxygen to produce a non-metal oxide. A metal oxide reacts with water to produce a metal hydroxide or a base. And lastly, a non-metal oxide reacts with water to form an oxy acid. And this ends our discussion on synthesis or combination reactions.